Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is December 3rd, 2020. Let's talk crypto. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I don't want people to take this the wrong way. Let me follow up on an earlier video. I don't have anything uh, intrinsically against Ethereum. I think it's an excellent technology, right? I've owned Ethereum for years. I still own some. I understand a lot of people are excited about Ethereum 2.0. I even see some Bitcoin maximalist types now talking optimistically about Ethereum on forums like Real Vision, which is a must watch, Raul Paul's forum, right? But I need for people to understand at this watershed moment in American finance, and I encourage people to look at some of the videos being put out in advertisements by Porter Stansberry, right, of Stansberry Research. This is a watershed moment in American finance, right? We've printed 40 cents for every dollar that's out there this year. In other words, the money printing, the increasing of bank reserves, more accurately, has been out of control. But let me just say this as simply as I can. If you're thinking about getting into crypto because of these historical times and because you see the market opportunity, just understand that for me, and I'm talking for me, you have to think for yourself. This is not a video where I'm telling you what to do, rather, this is a video where I'm just telling you what I've done. For me, Bitcoin is a far superior, and I mean far superior, investment to Ethereum. I've discussed this in an earlier video. Let me just point out that Bitcoin is a finished product. Right, folks? It's done. What you see is what you get. Ethereum 2.0 is not, just like Ethereum 1.0 was not, right? Ethereum is going to have to be upgraded to keep up with competitors, right? Bitcoin, quite frankly, apart from gold, Bitcoin has no competitors as a store of value, right? One could argue, too, that gold's not a real competitor because of the storage costs, because of the inconvenience of trying to give someone coins or bars of gold, right? Bitcoin, by contrast, travels better, is easier to store, right? Is easier to divide. Well, let's talk about an evolving situation, one that I did not expect. It's something that people need to think about. Right now, I always knew that Bitcoin has problems as a means of exchange. It takes too long. It is too volatile. By the time your Bitcoin transaction clears, the price of Bitcoin might have changed somewhat. So the price you're paying might have changed somewhat. Initially, like James Altucher, a name you need to know in research, like James Altucher, initially, I was one of those hoping that Amazon, huge retailer, and other huge online retailers would accept Bitcoin. I can do that on ABC. As a means of exchange. Amazon off. Off. Right? I was hoping that, we'll call it they, would accept. Bitcoin as a means of exchange, as a way to pay for the items you're buying on the platform so that its use could expand and it could get corporate backing, the backing of Fortune 500 companies, big conglomerates like the company whose name I won't mention. Well, let me just point out that now its problems in terms of being used as a means of exchange have been ameliorated somewhat because right now 
You actually have companies like Uphold and Square that can convert your Bitcoin into a credit card backed by fiat money, right? In other words, on Uphold, I can get a MasterCard and then I can load up that MasterCard using my Bitcoin savings. And then, of course, I could use that MasterCard wherever MasterCard is accepted. And, of course, it will, you know, happen quickly. The transaction will process as fast as normal MasterCard transactions process, right? You can get credit cards right now on Uphold and Square. You have other services, BlockFi, which is about to debut their own Bitcoin card and stuff like that. So you can actually sell some Bitcoin. You can do this all on an app. Sell some Bitcoin, use it to load up a debit card, right? Some MasterCard or Visa, and then you could use that Visa just like you can any Visa on online major retailer platforms. But understand the biggest news, the signature development, certainly one of them, for these financial times that I did not expect is that Fortune 500 companies such as Square MicroStrategy are now converting some fiat cash reserves to Bitcoin as a store of value hedge. Right, folks, that's huge. Understand, Square's already thrown 50 billion dollars at Bitcoin, right? Understand, micro strategy, far more than that, right? Far more than that. Did I say 50 billion? I meant 50 million, right? Well, I just need for people to fully understand that this has huge potential. If Fortune 500 companies if Russell 2000 companies feel that having their reserves in cash, fiat currency, places those reserves at risk, right? Because fiat currency has been losing value. The dollar has lost more than 90% since Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard. If they start investing hundreds of millions of dollars into Bitcoin, right? They don't have to convert their entire cash reserves into Bitcoin. They can stick their toe in the water, like MicroStrategy has done, like Square has done, and just invest a little bit, a little bit of their cash reserves. What you're going to have is a cascade literally a cascade of institutional money pouring into Bitcoin. What I want to encourage people to do is to look up the cash reserves amount of Apple, for example, of Google, for example. Right? You're talking about a lot of cash, folks. In other words, any time a corporate board decides to invest even 1% of this cash hoard, into Bitcoin, that's going to move this relatively small market, right? So understand, these companies can move the Bitcoin market without dealing with Bitcoin as a means of payment in direct transactions with customers. Now, it's important to understand that this is because of Bitcoin's store of value feature. No other cryptocurrency is in line for this level of corporate investment in the near future. And that includes Ethereum 2.0. Right? I'm not dazzled. I'm not overly impressed when I start hearing about transactions per second and the use of a crypto as a means of payment. Right, That doesn't convince me 
And understand, I'm a Dash holder, for example. I believe in Dash, right? But that doesn't convince me that that crypto has the upside, at least for the next 18 months, that Bitcoin has as a store of value. In other words, Fortune 500 companies are much more likely to invest in an alternative to gold in the crypto space, which is Bitcoin. They're much more likely to invest in crypto as a store of value than they are as a means of payment. Since Bitcoin is a finished product, and since Bitcoin is the coin that is attracting institutional money, it's a much better investment than Ethereum, even with Ethereum's upgrade to Ethereum 2.0. Let me also talk about a recent crypto investment that I've made that I think has huge upside. With China unrolling its digital currency, folks, it's going to be here in a matter of weeks. And with other countries planning digital currencies as well. Understand that the state issued digital currencies, the centralized digital currencies, will remove the privacy that you now have to do private cash transactions. In other words, Let's say I lose a sports bet with a friend. Let's say I owe that friend $20. Right now, I can take out a $20 bill. Say, player, I owe you $20 from our bet. Pay that person $20. He gets paid in full. I've paid my debt. It's U.S. currency, and nobody else needs to know about it. Right? I don't have to resort to chicanery or anything like that. I can pay him $20 in U.S. currency. I can pay him directly. There's no ledger anywhere with the transaction. The government doesn't know about the transaction. Family members don't know about the transaction. I have privacy in a free country. Now, if I do that transaction using a state-issued digital currency, guess what, folks? The transaction is on the ledger. If the government feels that the transaction is untoward, let's say I'm in one of these states that doesn't allow gambling, right? Then the government can have government agents check up with me. They can take out their ledger and they can say, hey, the wire, we see that on this date at this time, you gave this person $20. Tell us why. You already see shows on ID and Oxygen Network right now, crime shows, where, you know, a crime's committed and they're able to go to someone and they say, hey, your phone pinged off this tower, which was right near the scene of this crime. At this time, at this location, what were you doing there? Right? You already have CCTV, closed circuit television, right? These security cameras all over the place. Where now, as the cops are trying to figure out a crime, they go to these CCTV videos and they can see you on a certain block at a certain time doing certain things. Right? Sometimes they don't even need to talk to you. By the time they talk to you, they already have the film of you using the victim's you know, ATM card at the ATM machine. Well, understand, with digital currency, it's going to get worse. Let's say, unbeknownst to me, the guy I lost the sports bet to, who I gave $20 to electronically using a state-issued digital currency that's showing up on a blockchain ledger on several computers. Let's say, unbeknownst to me, that guy has committed major crimes. That guy's a drug dealer. 
suddenly everyone out there with access to the blockchain knows that I paid some suspected drug dealer $20. How many cops are going to show up at my door? How many police interviews am I going to have to give? Suddenly there's suspicion on me because the transaction showed up on a blockchain. So I believe privacy coins, not state issued anything. I'm talking about decentralized crypto, right? Not government issued, market issued. I believe privacy coins are set to flourish. Now, in the past here online, you've heard me talk about Monero. Folks, look at the chart on Monero for the last eight weeks or so. Monero's flourishing, right? Horizon has had a nice run. These are privacy coins. The government, by the way, is offering a bounty for anyone who can crack the encryption on Monero. That's how threatened the government is. Exchanges who want to comply, right? They are following know your consumer uh, orders and stuff like that. Exchanges who are trying to ingratiate themselves to government now have announced, hey, we're going to knock off all of these privacy coins off our exchange, right? Some of them have been idiotic enough to consider Bitcoin-based altcoins like Dash to be privacy coins. So some Korean exchanges, for example, now won't do business with Dash. Well, let me just say, consider yourself lucky. That's why we have the world of DeFi, decentralized finance, right? Understand, the easiest way to make something popular is to start excluding it. Is to start saying, hey, Monero, you're so big, bad, and dangerous because you're so private that we aren't going to allow you to do business on our exchange. Right, Monero, you're so effective in being a private coin that we, the United States government, are going to offer hackers bounties to try to figure out a way to you know, deconstruct your ring signatures. In other words, folks, the blowback on these privacy coins is because of the effectiveness of these privacy coins. So what you want to do, just like with investing in startups, you want to, at least I want to, invest in a coin before it's very well known to the public, right? While the coin is relatively unknown, while the coin isn't on that many exchanges. Folks, I want to introduce viewers here who might not have heard about this coin to a coin called Pirate Chain. The symbol is A-R-R-R, R, right? <laughs> Look it up on coinmarketcap.com, right? Pirate Chain. Pirate Chain has been on a very nice run. It's a privacy coin. It's been on a very nice run. It has a robust community on Discord, right? And I encourage people as they research these coins to go to Discord, to go to reddit.com, right? Research these coins thoroughly. Find out the deals that these coins have made with other cryptos, right? Let me just say, too, that Pirate Chain has great technology. In other words, you want a privacy coin that, like Monero, is robust, is the kind of coin that these snoopers can't break, right? A, a privacy coin that is going to remain private. I believe Pirate Chain has the technology to do so. You can find Pirate Chain on Coinex Exchange. By the way, Coinex is an excellent exchange. 
Research CoinX before you do business with CoinX. I can tell you I've been on CoinX for a while. Let me also say, most importantly, is that Pirate Chain is dirt cheap. Its market cap is much smaller than Monero, much smaller than Horizon. Right, but it's had a nice rise. In other words, this is an up and comer. So, if you're like me and you care about privacy, just know that I've picked up a uh, position in Pirate Chain, right? I think this is a coin that has legs. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your message in the comment section of this video. Let me also offer a special invitation because I know there is a huge Ethereum crowd out there, right? My concerns with Ethereum in part stem from the robustness of Polkadot, for example, right? Uh, stems from concerns about Cardano continuing to improve, continuing to get a lot of business, right? If you believe, as many do, as many do, that Ethereum somehow is going to overtake Bitcoin because of its smart contract capability, and you want to explain that to the public, please, Consider this an invitation to do so in the comment section of this video. Feel free to embed your own links to your own web page or videos in the comment section of this video. Okay, thank you for stopping by.